Hello, it's such an honor. Thanks for being here. Yeah, no, thank you. I'm just glad to be here. It's a nice place. Oh, great, thanks. Great. Uh, okay, um, why don't you just have a seat right there, I guess. Uh, can I get you anything before we start? Uh, no. Okay. Well, they're going to record a sort of introduction, so we don't have to worry about names and stuff. Okay? Yeah. You ready to go? Yeah, sure, whatever, anytime. Okay, let's, uh, let's get some better lighting in here. Uh, is that boom plugged in yet? We uh, hang on. Boom is... Okay, there we go. It's plugged in. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> okay, let, let's, uh, let's go ahead and start then. <clears throat> okay, three, two, one. This is really spectacular. I can't believe I'm talking to the only known survivor from Salt Lake City's quarantine area of the ravaged virus. You survived trapped on the streets for eight days with, well, there's, there's no other words for it, monsters. Tell me, on day one when you realized your predicament, were you scared? Actually, we had a blast. I ran with a couple of lovely friends of mine, and we weren't ignorant to what was going on. We'd seen like every Romero movie ever made, and all the creatures limp around as slowly as possible. You'd think that anyone who could walk at a brisk pace would stand a pretty good chance of survival. I thought for a while that maybe the entire world would be populated by Olympic race walkers, like <laughs> survival of the fittest. Everything just fell into like a fictional set of rules. It was easy. I guess we just realized that with great apocalypse comes great freedom. And it wasn't until like day three that we realized that we'd maybe I watched the, the wrong the movies. Facebook, like, last we had the knowledge to fight slow-moving mummies, sure what we didn't count on is that these creatures must have been hitting the gym or something. Somehow, suddenly, they weren't pushovers anymore. We underestimated them. It turns out that was a big mistake. I'm here to tell you you can't underestimate them. Don't think for a minute that a simple quarantine is going to stop them. You understand? No, do you get it? Like, really? But you handled surviving up until you rescued just fine. No, no, that's it, though. If I hadn't been rescued, I wouldn't have survived. It's simple. It's math. We were living by the rules, and those things, they were just making them up. They weren't just evolving, like, physically. They were getting smarter. They were getting ridiculously smarter ridiculously quickly. Humanity isn't ready to adapt to those sort of situations. The monsters, they lived on instinct. They evolved on instinct. We simply just couldn't keep up. We were lucky to even live past that point to even know what was going on. We knew other survivors. We all handled it differently. Some hid, some tried to get away, but I watched everyone else as they got outwitted by animals. Now, actually, you know what? You can't make that mistake. Don't make the mistake of thinking they're just animals. They're not. They know who they are. They know what they're doing. They remember who you are. They remember everything. They're just sick. It just makes them even more dangerous. They know what they're doing. Yeah. They really are just better creatures than us. It was only like our material possessions that allowed us to overpower them. There are only so many bullets, so much gasoline in downtown Salt Lake City. Once we ran out of our stuff, like we couldn't survive. We're simply just nothing without our stuff. The creatures, like even as individuals, they could be greater than us and better than us with our just stupid tools we carried. It's about just when the monsters started breaking the rules. I always thought I was a great guy. I turned out to be just another frightened kid. I just had to survive no matter what I did. However crazy, however weird, however cowardly, I just had to survive. You ever read Heart of Darkness? It's just... It's been just running through my mind lately. There's this part where the main guy, his name's Marlo, he's going down the Congo and he meets the natives. And he's, he doesn't know how to react and he's thinking, no, they are not inhuman. Well, you know, that was the worst of it. The suspicion of their not being inhuman. It would come slowly to one. They howled and leaped and spun and <clears throat> made horrid faces. But what thrilled you was just the thought of their humanity like yours. <laughs> Ugly. Yes, it was ugly enough, but if you were man enough, you would admit to yourself that there was in you just the faintest trace of a response to the terrible frankness of that noise. You know, at first I thought that they were just mindless, emotionless automatons, but I was wrong. I saw personality. I saw laughter, and then I saw thought, 
And it was horrible. It was the wrong personality. It was the wrong individuality. It was like their bodies were suddenly refining evil. <laughs> well, well, that's fascinating. <coughs> now that it's over for you, what, <coughs> what future plans do you have in the life of the living? Oh. <coughs> oh. <coughs> no, it's not over. And I plan on <laughs> keeping living. What? what? <coughs> uh, what the oh, ah, no! <laughs> Good night.